Good evening. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's always a, I never take it for granted that you're here, so I thank you for being here. And again, for those who have joined us online, I thank you as well. And tonight I want to, again, share what the Lord has put on my heart, but before I do, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for another opportunity I have to share your word. And I just pray, Lord, that it will minister to the hearts, that you would open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you would have for us this night, Lord. And anything that is accomplished will be sure to give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If I was to title this message, it would be, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. You have stayed at this mountain long enough. And of course, that comes from the scriptures in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. So we're going to take a look at that. The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go into the neighboring peoples in Abreb, Abra Abra in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. As a result of their lack of faith and disobedience, the Israelites spent 40 years, instead of a few weeks, um, traveling from Egypt to the Promised Land. They spent 40 years. And I want to remind you that the children of Israel had seen God move in many things and in many ways. He delivered them from Egypt out of slavery. They had seen God put the, apart the Red Sea and they walked out on dry ground and the Egyptians that followed them did not. They had a great deliverance that day and they saw that. They had seen God provide food and water for them from manna every day to quail and from water from a rock. And we're not talking a little bit of people, we're talking about a million people that God had ministered to and provided. And if you think about it, their clothes never wore out. Their sandals and shoes never wore out. God provided for them, so they saw that. God took care of them and they, they knew they were headed to the promised land. They knew that that's why God had delivered them from Egypt. So I would ask, why did they wander for over 40 years? Why did they wander for over 40 years? Let's take a look at Numbers chapter 13, looking at verses 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites from each ancestral tribe, and send one of its leaders. Moses sent um, out men to explore the land of Canaan, their promised land. He sent them out, telling them that it is a land filled with milk and honey. So they, they went. And he actually said he was giving them the land. He let them know up front, this is the land I'm giving you. So you know they have his blessings. You know that he is going to provide for them and, and fight for them. Remember that God had been with them all the way to where they were at the point, at this point. God had been with them the whole entire times, and they had seen many miracles. So they have seen God moving on their behalf many times. Let's take a look at Numbers 13, verses 23 to 35, or 25. When they reached the valley of Eshcol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. So we, again, we have the number 40 here. So we can see that the land did flow with milk and honey. The grape, one cluster of grapes they had to carry on a pole between two, two people had to carry that cluster of grapes. That's how big they were. And they brought pomegranates and, and all. So it did flow with milk and honey. They explored it for 40 days. And the 12 men that were sent out, 10 of them gave a bad report. And two of them gave a positive report. Take a look at Numbers 13. We're going to look at 26 to 33. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. Where there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account, we went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. 
Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Enoch there. The uh, Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Enoch come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. And this verse always gets me. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. They were just looking through their eyes. They were not looking through the eyes of the Lord, but in their own eyes. And then they assumed that's how they looked to them. Those 10 out of 12 men did not have a loyal relationship with God. And they did not trust God in the promising concerning their future. They did not trust him. All the time he had been with them, they still did not trust him in their future. On the other hand, Joshua and Caleb had a, a firm commitment to God and full confidence in his, his um, promise to Israel. They knew who God was. So what I see here is when the Lord speaks to our heart and he tells us he's going to do something for us, we could get some negative reports. More than likely, we will get some negative reports, just like the children of Israel. But if you've heard from God, stick with it. If you've heard from God, stick with it, because he will deliver. He will go before you. But, but I would ask, where do we stand with God? Where do we stand with him? Do we believe what he says when he speaks to us? Because he told the children of Israel he was giving them that land. And he'd already provided for them. So did they believe him? So do we believe him? Do we have confidence in who God is in our lives and promises? Do we have confidence in him? If we go to Numbers chapter 14, I'm looking at verse 31 to 35. It says, as for your children, and the Lord or God is speaking here because of their negative report. He says, as for your ch children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which has banded together against me. They will meet their end in the wilderness. Here they will die. Well, we see why they wandered for 40 years. That is why they wandered for 40 years. At, at one part of their journey, their journey, they journeyed around um, about the same mountain in the desert for such a long time that the Lord himself told them, it is enough. So for 40 years, they wandered. And this is the reason they wandered, because their children were going to be able to see the land the promised land, but they were not, and it said it took 40 years for them to die out. But at one point, they wandered around Mount Sinai for, for, for a long time, and the Lord said, enough. So let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 2, I'm going to look at verses 1 through 3. Then we turned our back and set out toward the wilderness along the, the route to the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time, we made, our round, uh, we made a way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. So at this point, 
the Lord is, is telling Israel, enough. You've journeyed this long enough. You see, Israel could not stay on the mountain and show the power of God. They couldn't stay on the mountain and show the power of God. If they just stayed there, there was no one there to see who God was. But as they began to journey into the place that he told them, then others could see the power of God. But as long as they stayed there, they couldn't. So they had to break camp. They had to break camp. Israel had spent time on Mount Sinai, and now it was time to move on. The welfare and the future of God's people depended on it. Maybe they got comfortable just wandering in the desert, falling in the cloud by day and the fire at night, especially the children, because this is all they know. So it's very comfortable living. I mean, God's provided all along the way. Even though their parents have died, they're very comfortable in what God has done. That was their comfort, if you will. And each one of us have a comfort zone. And the Lord sometimes says, you stayed there long enough. I need you to move on. I need you to move on. For this is for, they did this for 40 years, but God was ready for them to break a camp and move forward. The children of Israel were people of promise, but what good is a promise if unaccepted or unclaimed? What good is that promise? So, you know, the Lord gives us promises, but what good is it is it's unclaimed? What good is it if we don't reach out and take that promise, if we don't do what God is asking us to do? God was on the move to possess their possession. He was ready to take it for them. They must follow. So some of us, because of our comfort zones and our, our, and our familiarity, we don't want to leave our mountain. And our mountains is different. Each one of our mountains is different. So I would ask you, why is it important for us to break camp in our lives? Why can't we just sit in our comfort zone? Why is that important? If we never leave the mountain, the world will never know we were touched by Jesus. If we just sit, the world will never know we've been touched by Jesus. So he allows us to go through things because he's wanting to use us. If you follow the children of Israel to Jericho, you will see that the people were afraid of the children of Israel. Now, these are the children. This is the second generation. But they were afraid of them. Why? Because they had heard that their God was with them. They had heard that. They're no longer on the mountain, but they're moving forward. And now others can see the power of God in their lives. And so they were afraid. We cannot stand still and grow. We cannot do that. It is easy to bask in the glow of the comfortable and the familiar. It's really easy to do that. But that is not what God has planned for his children, in which are those who've accepted him. So you and I, and those who've accepted, he has not planned for us just to, to bask in our comfortable, familiar state. That's not what he's called us to do. You see, we are on a journey a journey of growth. He never wants us to be stagnant. He's always wanting us to grow. Moving forward in our lives always takes great strength and courage. It requires us to challenge ourselves to take risk, to challenge ourselves to take risk. We can't get to where we are going by staying where we are. Let me say that again. We, can, we can't get where we're going by staying where we are. You see, many of us never get where we're supposed to be in life because we don't want to leave where we are. We like our comfort zone. And God pushes us. He's pushing us because he's got more for us. Just as he had for the children of Israel, he had a land flowing with milk and honey, and they wandered for 40 years. But now he says, enough, I have more for you. And in our life, he'll say, enough, I have more for you. I have more for you. I'm not talking about moving out of state or out of country. I'm talking about leaving your mountain, whatever it might be, wherever your comfort is. 
When God says it's time to move, we say, I can't leave. But I will tell you, so often in the plans of God, leaving is the door to your destiny. Leaving is the door to your destiny. We can see that in life, we can see that in the life of Abraham. Ahead of Abraham was the fathering of the Jewish nations, an exciting place of leadership in the purposes of God. But first, he had to leave. He had to leave. In this case, he had to leave his country. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 12, looking at verses 1 and 2. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. So let's take a look at this. Leave the people you know and love. That's what he's telling Abraham. Leave them. The place, and the place that you know and the security, which is his comfort zone. He knows where this place that he's living in, and that's his comfort. And he's saying, leave that. And, and um, go to a land that God will show you. So when we're going somewhere, I sort of chuckled at this. When we're going somewhere, we get as much information as we can. We'll get brochures, we'll get whatever, trying to figure out where we're going. Abraham didn't have that. He did not have that. And sometimes we'll talk to people and say, hey, have you been here? How is it? And get that information. He had no idea where he was going. So he couldn't even ask someone, what's it like over there? He had to totally trust God, totally trust him. Abraham didn't have anything. He just was leaving the known for the unknown. That's trusting God, leaving the known for the unknown. If you follow Abraham's life, you can see where the Lord blessed him. But I will remind you, as you follow his life in the scriptures, it was not always easy for him. He had trials and tribulations. Some trials he caused himself, but he had trials and tribulations. But he kept moving forward. He didn't stop. He didn't say, forget it. This is too hard. He kept moving forward. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. And this is the faith chapter. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Faith and obedience go hand in hand. Faith and obedience go hand in hand. And he received what the Lord had for him, but not till later. He just went out in and, and faith. I want to say, we don't move, if we don't move when God says move, we miss his best and we settle for what's safer. We miss his best and settle for what's safer. If you decide based on what's safe and comfortable, you will almost surely miss God's great plans for you if you settle for safe and comfortable. Remember Peter? He left his fishing business and became the disciple Peter. Matthew left his tax collecting office and became the disciple Matthew. Things that they were comfortable with. You know Peter was comfortable with fishing. He knew fishing. You know Matthew was comfortable with tax collecting. He knew the taxes, but they left them and they became disciples for the Lord, an adventurer. They went on an adventure with the Lord. Moving when God is asking us is so often the door to your destiny. It could be he is asking you to leave a friendship, a relationship that is not good, a position at work, your comfort zone. And I read a story that God called a dedicated young woman from a lucrative job with one of the most prestigious modeling firms in the world to join a nonprofit ministry in rescuing the lost. And on her application, under reason for leaving that dream job, she simply wrote one word, Jesus. 
That was it. Jesus. I have to say, that's why you leave your mountain, because of Jesus. Whether it might be, a, it, whatever it might be, break camp. Break camp. He's asking you to leave behind the known for the unknown. Don't miss your destiny by holding on. Remember Peter in the boat with the other disciples in a storm, and Jesus comes walking on the water. And Peter asked, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter went out, and he walked on water. The rest of them didn't. They sat in the boat, and they watched Peter do this. Well, remember, those who never get out of the boat never know what it is to walk on water. Only Peter did. They're, he's the only one that did. Take risks. Take risks out there. You can't, get, you, you can't get to where you're going by staying where you are. There's a time to move on. There's a territory to occupy. There's a promise to be fulfilled. Jesus knows where you are and where you're going. Ask him to increase your faith and give you courage to get up and walk away from your comfort zone or your mountain and go forward. Don't miss when he speaks. I read a story where a woman started a t-shirt business that the Lord had given her a vision and scriptures to go with it. So she knew that's what the Lord was asking her to do. So every t-shirt she sold, she donated one for someone in need. So she would sell one and, and give one. She partnered with um, a local ministry that supplied clothing to the poor and veterans programs that provided for wounded warriors. She said the business was fun. She was happy using her creativity to help others. She said the best part of the business was meeting the people who were excited to get, to give, and the blessed, and those that were blessed for receiving. She worked beside her daughter and her husband. Her, um, her all-time favorite event was when she partnered with the Warrior and Family Support Center in her hometown of San Antonio. We were celebrating brave lives, changed by sacrifice but not forgotten. After that event, she began to realize that the t-shirt business wasn't the end, but the act of obedience God was looking for. He showed me that blessings don't always look the way we think they should. One day, God just turned off my desire to be in the t-shirt business. She said, I had no desire to set up shop or do online promotions. She pressed on because she had inventory and even went on to order some other t-shirts with the branding on them, trying to do things on her own instead of waiting on God and waiting for the next move. She said, I should have stopped when God took away my desire. Instead, I ended up with debt and leftover inventory. She said, I beat up myself for a while about my decision to keep on going and ordering more inventory even after I felt God saying, it was time to move on. She says, listen carefully to God, not to understand, but to respond. You might not know what you're being called to do, just like Abraham. We have to be obedient to the call. We have to be obedient to the call. So tonight, I want to encourage you. When God says, break camp, you've stayed here long enough, break camp. Pack up and look for the door the Lord will open to your destiny because he has them there. And so don't get so comfortable in what you're doing because at any time the Lord can say enough and move you on to the next thing. But be willing, like Abraham, be willing and say, okay, Lord, we're on a journey. Don't know where I'm going, but we're on a journey because the Lord will bless you and use you for his glory. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity I've had to share your word. And Lord, you know who was here, would be here tonight. You know those that will be listening online. You know exactly the destiny you have for them. So I pray, Lord, that whatever comfort zone they might have or mountain that's in their way, that when it, it's time to move on, you will say, you have been here long enough. And that we will gladly say, okay, Lord, what's next? And that we will give it up 
easily give it up for the next journey that you have for us. So I thank you, Lord, for anything that's accomplished through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you stand?